In recent years, Kenya has faced a growing problem, drought. The lack of rainfall has left millions of Kenyans struggling to find enough food and water to survive. But what is causing this drought and what can be done to prevent it? In this documentary, we will explore these questions and more. beautiful green fields and vibrant flowers but now it is all brown and dry water scarcity has become an issue for months and it's only getting worse farmers used to grow for both commercial and consumption however due to the drought that has hit many parts of the country production has become a nightmare hunger loss of lives and lack of water has become the order of the day the effects of the drought are plain to see. Rivers and streams have dried up and many farmers have lost their crops. Animals are dying and people are struggling to find enough water to drink. But this isn't just a problem for Kenya. It is a global issue. Climate change is affecting communities all over the world and it's up to all of us to take action. In this documentary, we'll explore the causes and consequences of the drought in Kenya. We'll hear from experts, activists, and everyday people who are living through this crisis. We'll also look at the innovative solutions that are being developed to help communities adapt and thrive in the face of this challenge. Join us as we dive into this important topic and shed light onto the ongoing struggle of the Kenyan people and their fight for survival amidst one of the worst droughts in the country's history. Among the people who are also being affected by the current drought directly are the livestock keepers, the animals including cattle, goats, sheep and camels are dying leaving behind carcasses on the land. The pastoralists have been converted to nomads that is moving from one place to another in search of green pasture and clean water. They have been forced to dig deep not to their pockets in order to sustain the remaining livestock. This includes buying other foodstuffs such as hay, maize stalks and also water for their livestock. This has given them an economic hardship since they always depend on their livestock for a living. Their wish is the government could plant more trees for future benefits. Hapa nilipo niko maeneo ya Juja, maeneo ambapo inaitwa Juja Farm. Nataka kupatana na rafiki yangu mmoja ambaye ni mfugaji wa ngombe na atueleze kwa kina jinsi ukame inavyowasumbua. Super Rolly, Sole. Majina nataka utuambie majina yako. Uh, majina naitwa Julius Ndege. From Kajado, sasa tunahamia huko. Na kame inatusumbua sana kwa wengine. Sasa inatusumbua kwa upande ya ngombe. Sasa nyazi tuseme nyazi imeisha. Tunaendelea. Kwa tuwezi sasa kupeleka ngombe bila pesa. Tunaenda kunulia hizo nyazi, maveve. Lakini tunaona sasa kama ngombe zinaelemewa sana kwa sababu wakati ambaye hatuna pesa ndio tunaona ngombe zinakufa inategemea pesa mara mingi sana tunakosa pesa tuseme saizi hata kama ma, hata maji pia tunamnulia kwa hivyo sasa tunaona inatulemea kwa njia mingi sana ya yeah. ni ni kiangazi tu ndio alifanya alitufanya tu tuhame huko kwa sababu wakati mingi saa hizi na huko hatuna mbua huko. Tukisikia huku kumenyesha inabidi tuhamie ngombe zetu zote tulete huku. Ikuje sasa tukule nyazi huko kwa sababu na huko kimekuwa kiangazi. Yeah. Uh, hii mfuko wangu wakati nilihamia huku ilikuwa mingi sana. Ikaanza kukufa zikiwa Uh, zikuwa kule kajado juu ya hiyo kiangazi uh -huh. wakati ambaye tumeleta huku uh -huh. tukaona sasa imepata mabadiliko uh -huh. kwa sababu huku watu walimaji uh -huh. ndio wengi sana 
sasa ndio maana tumepata tukianda tuki, tuki tukianda kuitafutia kama hizo vitu za mahindi mm-hmm. wanatuzia mm-hmm. sasa tunaona hizo ndio inatusaidia sana yeah. kwa wakati wa saimu kwa wakati wa mfuko yetu mm-hmm. tukiona kiangazi inaelekea kuwa mingi sasa mm-hmm. sasa ile kitu ambayo tunaweza kuchukua hatua tunaweza kuhamisha kupeleka mali ingine kutafutia mali kuna nyazi uh-huh. ndio hili aende apate mali ya kukula na alafu tena nayo tukipeleka hapo uh-huh. sisi ni watu wa kuhamahama uh-huh. kwa sababu ni watu ambayo tukisikia mali kumenyesha kidoga mali kuna nyazi mnaenda huko pia tunaenda huko pia tunaenda kwa, kwa sababu inalingana na ngombe yetu kuna chakula imepungua sana kwa sababu sasa tunategemeanga maziwa kununua kununua chakula hata maji tunauziwa sasa hakuna hata pesa hata 10 bob ya kununua maji uwezi pata makata maziwa kwa sababu ya kuna nyasi sasa hakuna maziwa ngombe zinakufa zinakufa kwa sababu ya magonjwa sasa ni changamoto kwa sababu tunamuka usiku na bado tunamuka asubuhi kukamua the death of animals is one of the big losses pastoralists have faced up to 1.5 million livestock have died due to the tough drought in many parts of the country as the main source of income for these pastoralists the death of animals have dragged them to poverty animals that are lucky to survive are sold at a throwaway price due to their emaciated nature some even go for 1500 shillings from a dropping price of 60000 shillings school children have also dropped from school due to death of animals which are being sold to cater for their school fee hunger is the main cause of death however this drought also weakens the animal's immune system making it prone to diseases which also leads to death pastoralists have also had a challenge of getting rid of these carcasses however most of them have resolved to collecting them at one point and burning them nasema ni ngombe mingi sana ndio imeanza kufa karibu ngombe tuseme mia tatu hivyo lakini wakati ambaye imeanza kukufa inakufa ngombe mingi sana unastukia kwa siku una ngombe karibu kumi na kitu inakufanga na inakufa katika kwa sababu ya kiangazi sasa hii ngombe inaweza ku, inakufa kwa boma zingine zinanguka huko kwa wa kichaka alafu naye hii ngombe inakufa e, si ile ngombe ambayo ikikufa inaweza chinjwa alafu ikulue sasa hizo ni ngombe ambayo imelemewa sana na kiangazi alafu ni ngombe ambayo ukitaka kuuza ni ile ngombe ukiuza wakati wa wakati, wakati wa mbua unaweza uza ngombe moja kama uh, elifu uh, tuseme kama 8000 sasa wakati hii tuko wakati wa kiangazi ukiuza hiyo ngombe unauza elfu moja ama elfu moja na mia tano uh, saa hizi uh, atuna ile action nyingine kwa sababu tunaona inakufa sana ndio na ndio tulikuwa tunauzia watoto wa shule wengi wamerudi uh, uh, kwa nyumbani saa hii wameshindwa kuendelea na shule kwa sababu hatuna ile ngombe ambayo tunaweza uzia wacha niseme inakufa juu ya ukame sia kuna kata kama kuna ugonjwa mwingine lakini sana sana ni ukame alafu jambo ya pili hizo ngombe zikikufa tunaleta tunachoma kwa sababu hatuwezi tupa kule kwa kichaka tunaweka mali moja kusanya zote alafu ndio tuweze kuchoma Oasis River in Juja constituency Kiambu County has been a major supplier of water to the residents over the years but due to the raving drought it has dried up leaving the resident at a narrow path for finding water for survival residents are forced to buy water at high prices and seek alternative sources of water if rain don't fall anytime soon their fate will be at stake and they are left at a narrow path to finding water for survival The drought has also affected other residents of Kiambu County as they grapple with an acute water shortage. 
the residents are facing water rationing from the county water supplier. Kiambu Water and Sewerage Company says water levels from the dams supplying the county have declined massively and have urged residents to look for alternative water sources as the crisis may prevail until the onset of March may short rains. Hapo mbereni tumekuwa tukipata cubic meter elf tatu za maji na zaidi kwa siku lakini hicho kiwango kimepunguka hadi cubic meter elf moja huo ni upungufu wa karibu asilimia sitini na sita sixty six percent na hii imetokana na kiangazi wakati maji hiyo kidogo inapatikana waweze kuihifadhi tangu wakati ule tutaweza kupata mvua ndio tuwe na maji ambayo ni ya kawaida Kenya is a country that relies heavily on agriculture for both its economy and its people's livelihood. However, it is a country that is no stranger to drought. In recent years, drought have become more frequent and more severe, leaving farmers struggling to make ends meet. The crops have not been spared as drought bitterness have hit them beyond imagination. Farmers are only left with empty granaries nothing to put on the table nor the market. The little they managed to get have all ended in a mere second, leaving void in domestic sustainability. With a little farm produce on the market, the lives of many Kenyans have been left stuck in a drug of poverty and farming as the price of food commodities have shot immensely. Currently, over 5 million people are affected by hunger. Livestock have not only emaciated but a large number of cattle have died. Approximations stand at over 2.4 million deaths reported as per national statistics. The drought has affected almost all Kenya with the worst heat areas in north and northeastern. It has left millions of people without enough food and water and many are now reliant on aid. So my name is Jeremiah Wambete. I'm a farmer in Juja. Yeah. I deal in maize. I deal with maize, beans, uh, sunflower, and also do plant some sugar cane and also rare sunflower stone. Uh, actually, it has been a tough moment for me, actually, um, because the yields, the crop yields have really gone, have really gone down. Yes. Because, uh, like, for example, during normal times, I do normally harvest 100 bags of maize, mm -hmm. but because of drought, it has dropped actually as low as 40. Even for the beans, I do take out 20 bags of them, but the drought actually has brought the yields down to 10 bags and uh, it has really been disadvantageous for me because I have children going to school and I depend on that maize group for their school fees so actually it has been disadvantageous to me. Okay then uh, before the drought as you compare uh, the time before the drought and how the drought was how do you take how was the situation? Okay uh, I have as I have said before the, the drought it was heaven actually because I was I was taking out I was um, I mean before the drought I was harvesting very many I was harvesting a lot of a lot of maize and beans yeah and uh, even as you can see before the drought actually we have that something that we call the soil yeah the soil was productive on itself but now after the drought has come now it, it will force us because you know very many nutrients in the soil have died because of the drought yeah yes. so even if there as the rain i can see the rain have come even if the rain have come i will be forced to use more fertilizer in order to improve the yields actually the government of kenya should be responsible enough to take care of its citizens and uh, i call upon the government to come up with the ways and measures to ensure that uh, we have that water security in the country. Uh, I will urge the government to build dams and uh, to come up with the vast irrigation schemes that could at least cover farmers. Like, like now you can see, I could have taken much out of this sunflower, but now as you can see, 
all of them dried up because of that. So if the government could have been there and at least provided water during that time when we needed it, yes. actually we would have taken much uh, from the farm. But now I, my call to the government is just is just that they should come up with irrigation schemes. Let's defend our country. Let's not. Uh, we know rain is good, but it's not. It's not. It's not uh, actually reliable all the times. So if we come up with dams and irrigation schemes, that will be able to cover up this process, uh, this drought thing. As the country continues to face drought crisis, farmers are calling upon the government to come up with long-term solutions in order to prevent future crises. Joram Kitui, Jovial TV. Livestock keepers have continued to look for solutions in order to curb the drought that has been a menace in most parts of the country, resulting to the death of most livestock. Lack of enough pasture and water has resulted to most livestock lacking enough nutrients. This is therefore led to livestock unable to withhold most livestock diseases and becoming weak. Some of the measures they have undertaken in order to try and curb this situation is drilled boreholes, dams, vaccination programs, and construction of hay barns. Drought in Kenya has continued being a serious problem in most parts of the country. Livestock are dying due to lack of pasture and water. Today, I'll be interviewing one of the livestock keepers here at JQuart, Mr. Mwenda, to tell us the solution they have taken in order to curb this drought situation in Kenya. The best mitigation factors against drought is uh, when there is plenty of grass and water, you harvest and preserve. Harvest and conserve in terms of A, syringe, yeah, those are the best methods of water conservation when there is plenty, so that you manage to feed your animals uh, sufficiently throughout the year, even in, during the dry spell. You have hydrate, enough of it, A, you construct a bands, sirens, we have sirens. Sometimes you can even ensure above the ground. You can use drums. We have tubular in small scale. And those are the methods of water conservation. Even Napier can be ensured, which it's not uh, much intensive in terms of uh, establishment and management. Like maize, sometimes we need to a lot of maybe fertilizer, seeds, and uh, pest control, like. Right? For handworms, sometimes they invade the, the maize, for the maize or reason maize disease, sometimes uh, causes a box in terms of this production. But uh, Napier is uh, cheaper as compared to maize, but those are all for the crops. We need them for the still feeding of these animals throughout the year. Water, you can have dams in dry areas for conservation of water. Jaycourt, we have a dam. That's where you get the water for our animals. Disease control, we have vaccination programs. Tick control, Mr. Other control, Mr. Diseases like trypanosomiasis, trypanosome, prone area, sterilization of the insects, 
Farmers have gone further to incorporate ways in which the available limited water can be used to its maximum. Irrigation, mulching being some of the best approach that can be considered. Adapting drip irrigation being one of the best ways as water is not wasted. And little amount is used keeping the soil wet and the plants grow and the installation of the drip pipe is simple as well. Other creative methods have been employed capillary working system where water reserve is underneath, meaning evaporation is minimized and therefore a farmer can use the system after two weeks from the previous time. I'm Geoffrey Gushu Maura. I'm the Vice Chair Hossa, the Horticulture Student Association. The most used system here we use the drip irrigation. Irrigation is very useful in conserving water because it only rates some little amount that ago. Plus when the farm is wet, you, clo you can close, you have valves. We have divided our farm into blocks. So like every block has its own valve. Once the farm is, you, you observe the farm is already wet enough, you can just close the valves. So like it helps in conserving the water. Our water comes from the dam, comes in to our farm through the hydrants. So like it's a, it helps a lot in conserving the water. We have our own, like the tanks here. Uh -huh. yeah, they help, help out this. When the, the water comes in, sometimes we put water in the tanks. So when there's no water, especially in the greenhouses, the, we're watering the seedlings, we use the water from the tanks. We have some gardens. We try using the moist beds and the capillary wicking system. Once they in the moist bed, yeah. it design, it designed in such a way that you just water once per, in two weeks. That's how it works. The capillary wicking system, we have some, we show you on our way out. Yeah. We have some system like the water, there's a water reservoir below the garden. So that the water, the water comes in from underneath. It's not exposed direct sunlight. So it helps conserving the water. Like the garden we have there, a vertical garden, just water once in a week. So it helps in conserving water. Other systems you can do mulching. It prevents direct sunlight from hitting the ground. So it conserves the water in the soil. Farmers have really tried to keep the land green despite the scorching sun and the result can be seen as you can see. Uh, the method used, they, we can say they have been successful. Global TV, I'm Sharon. The lack of rains has not only affected the agricultural sector, but also the business section. These are interdependent entities which work best when both functions. The entrepreneurs in the market depend on commodities from the farm, such as groceries, fruits, livestock products such as meat, skins, and many more products. Therefore, when drought strikes, there will be low supply of goods, hence the prices will hike. Most of the agricultural products vanish in the market, hence forcing some entrepreneurs to shut down their businesses. Welcome to uh, Juja Market. This is one of the largest market around Juja. We want to interview some sellers about how this drought has affected them. Kwa majina naitwa Mjamina wa Mutira. Na mimi nafanya kazi hapa soko ya Juja. Mimi msimu wa kiangazi ndio kwa ajia ya sana sababu vitu zimekuwa bei na maisha imekuwa ngumu sana. Kibiashara kazi imekuwa chini sana sababu watu hawana pesa. Pia bahari tunatoa vitu. Nimepandisha bei kwa sababu 
zimekuwa nzuri sana. Eh, mambo imekuwa ngumu sana lakini tumejaribu kupenya mahali imekuwa na vitu ambavyo sinaweza patikana za kuleta kwa soko. Eh, gharama ya kusileta ndio imekuwa juu na pia sisi tuka, tunaweza kukapandisha bei kutokana na gharama ya kuleta vitu hizo katika soko. Na wakati tumeleta hizo vitu katika soko tunaona wale ambao wanakuja kununua wananunua kwa kiwango cha chini sana sababu maisha imekuwa tu sana. Unge unge siri serikali yetu iweze kuchimba bonus na pia kutengeneza dam wakati kunanyesha tunaona maji mengi inapotea sana hiyo maji inaweza kufadhiliwa na wakati wa kiangazi inaweza kunipa kuweza kununuzia mashamba ndio chakula ikaweze kuwa mingi katika mjini. as we conclude this documentary it is clear that the drought in Kenya is a complex issue that requires urgent attention and action climate change unsustainable land use and poor water management are all contributing factors that need to be addressed if we are to prevent drought and protect the livelihoods of millions of people and wildlife in the region. It's up to all of us to take responsibility and play our part in addressing this crisis by reducing our carbon footprint, supporting sustainable agriculture and land management, and advocating for better water management policies. We can all contribute to a more sustainable and resilient future for Kenya and the world. And let us all work together to make a positive impact and create a brighter future for generations to come. As Jovial TV, we've come to the conclusion that the government should build more dams which will retain water that can be used during drought. Number two, the government should teach people on drought, its effect and how to curb it in case it happens. And finally, the government should encourage people to practice irrigation farming. Neema Karimi. <laughs>